In this lecture, we're going to introduce the concept of ionic bonding. The learning outcomes for this section ask that we distinguish among ionic, covalent, and metallic bonding, but that's actually going to take a couple of lectures, so let's focus on the ionic bonding concepts first and hold the other two topics for now. Let's begin. From what we've learned about ionization energy and electron affinity, we know that metals tend to lose electrons to form cations, while nonmetals tend to gain electrons to form anions. In this example, a neutral sodium atom with the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1 will give up one valence electron to form Na plus with the same electron configuration as neon. A neutral chlorine atom has the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5, so it's more favorable to gain an electron to achieve an argon noble gas structure, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Once these electrons have been transferred, the sodium cation and chloride anion are held together by electrostatic attraction so strong that we call them ionic bonds. Individual pairs of ions do not bond together to form discrete units. Rather, huge numbers of both types of ions form a three-dimensional lattice. A lattice is held together by the electrostatic attractions between the oppositely charged cations and anions. The chemical formula of an ionic compound indicates the simplest ratio of the types of ions in the lattice and is called a formula unit, not a molecule. Let's compare this ionic lattice to other types of formulas. If we have an element that exists as atoms, we call this an atomic element and refer to the individual units as atoms. If we have one of the seven diatomic elements, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, which is pictured here, or iodine, because they come in pairs and have a covalent bond, we call the individual units molecules. Please note that only nonmetal atoms bound to other nonmetal atoms can form covalent bonds and be called molecules. In our sodium chloride example, we have a large number of oppositely charged ions that exist in an extended crystal lattice. Because it would be cumbersome to count every single ion to represent it in a formula, we look for the smallest repeating ratio of ions, which we refer to as a formula unit. Anytime you have a metal bound to a non-metal, it's going to form an ionic compound, and we have to use the term formula unit to describe its formula. Let's work through another ionic bonding example. We're going to write the electron configurations for the neutral atoms of calcium and bromine to discover what the most reasonable formula unit will be in the resulting ionic compound. Calcium has core electrons located in the n equal 1, 2, and 3 energy levels, so only the electrons in the 4s orbital, the valence electrons, will participate in bonding. It's easier for calcium to lose two electrons rather than gaining six to achieve a noble gas electron configuration, so we wind up with a calcium 2 plus cation. This frees up two electrons that bromine can accept. Bromine has core electrons located in the n equal 1, 2, and 3 energy levels, so only the electrons in the 4s and 4p orbitals, the valence electrons, will participate in bonding. It's easier for bromine to gain one electron rather than losing seven to achieve a noble gas electron configuration. So we wind up with a bromine one minus anion. Putting these two ions together, we can use the drop signs cross charges approach to get the formula for a neutral ionic compound, CaBr2. As always, I'll leave you with the parting thoughts of the authors.